I do have some goals for all of us today. And mainly it's that I want you to be 100% all in by the end of this training that you want to sell more and that you want to look your best. I can't stress enough how important display is to making sales, doubling your sales and selling the absolute most that you can at a vendor expo. Um, I want you to have a vision of exactly what you need and what you want to do with your display. And I want you to have the tools and resources to get started. I'm going to be dropping several links. They are printed in this presentation. So once we have this up on the website for replay, there will also be the slide deck. So that means the PDF of this presentation. So you can reference all the links. So if we if you don't write it down, not a problem. Look for it on the blog and you can get it there. And I want you to be excited and know that this is going to work. So with Big Top being certified means that you have passed all of our criteria for visual merchandising or your display. And so these are the different criteria. There's 175 points up for grabs and you need 100 points to be certified. And we did that because we wanted you to have different paths to success. We know uh, one display works for one person and something completely different works for everyone else. But you will notice the big bad boy here giving you 50 points, you're halfway to being certified, is having a backdrop. And that backdrop should be a minimum of eight feet tall and the width of your booth. So if you're in a 10 by 10, you need it 10 foot wide. If you do a 10 by 20, you need 20 foot wide. So it should be covering the entire back. And as we go through the presentation, you'll see why that is so important. So just a little bit about me. Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa. I'm a founder of Big Top Entertainment and loving it. So I have an absolute passion for selling. Pretty much my entire career has been involved in either the sales department or the marketing department. Um, and so I started my first company at 14. I started a temporary labor agency in Old Town Spring and went around to all the store owners and said, you can pay me by the hour. And pretty soon I was fully booked and I was able to hire my friends and I took 50 cents of each of their paychecks to pay myself and was really proud of it, not going to lie. Um, I've been a multi-level uh, marketing leader. I've sold direct to consumers as well as business to business, mostly in the cosmetics industry. Um, working in retail my way through college, doing visual merchandising and some of the big box stores that you know about. Um, I've been a telemarketer. I've been in social media sales. When I went from telemarketing to social media sales, that was kind of right when Facebook was starting to boom. And I was telling the company that I worked for like, hey, listen, Facebook and social media is going to be very important. We need to leverage it as a sales channel. We need to be able to pull sales out of social media. And they told me that I was crazy that people only posted what they ate for lunch or pictures of their cats. And we were going to stick to our traditional marketing methods. And that's really when I went out on my own and started my own on online retail store. I began becoming an exhibitor just like you doing events. And then I got the great idea one day of, hey, let's take this to the next level. I want to do my own events with my own vision that we can get consumers to come and shop from all the Texas-based small businesses. And so that's a little bit about me and where we are today in the business. Um, so let's talk about merchandising. What is merchandising? What are the goals of merchandising? Well, our first goal is to grab their attention. If we don't grab their attention, they're not going to come into our booth. They're not going to understand what we sell. Consumers in general, you have to understand they have a mindset of there's a million things happening around them at once, especially when we're at a live event, right? We have live music going on. They have their kids with them. They have other shoppers around them. They have a hundred booths that they're going to look at. And the brain honestly just cannot process all of that information at once. So that's why you see a lot of people, they're just kind of running right by your booth, right? They're not even stopping. They don't even know what you're selling. And that's because you weren't able to grab their attention and they were not able to understand what you sell in two seconds. You have to grab their attention literally in a very small amount of time. So they need to understand exactly what you sell when they look at their booth. You also want to make it easy for them to say yes. Yeah. Um, so they're not confused. They understand your pricing. They understand the quality of the product. They're able to touch it, ask questions, all of those good things. And it's easy for them to say yes. And um, you want to be memorable for future repeat buyers, especially when it comes to display. We get emails and, um, you know, Facebook messages all the time of, um, I bought a hat 
but I can't remember who it's from. I want to buy another one. And then how they reference them is how they looked. They had wooden walls. They had uh, blingy hats. They had a big balloon arch. And then usually we're also able to remember who that was because the display does stand out and we're able to connect that shopper back with that exhibitor so they can make a secondary purchase. So would like you to take a look at the slide and tell me in the chat, are you A, B, or C? And I'll start off by saying there is no wrong answer. Everybody is welcome. Everybody has a place at the show. But when we're doing this specific training, who I'm talking to, someone, this is their career. This is how they pay their bills. This is how they make money for their family. And they want to maximize their time at an event. And they want to make the most sales possible while they are at an event. Nothing wrong with being a hobbyist. Nothing wrong with this is something you do for fun on the side. That's great. We also want you to look your best but I'm talking to the professional exhibitors right now. So are you A, I want an easy setup. I want to be the first one packed up and gone at the at closing. And we hear that a lot from people. Um, well, I just don't really want to get here the day before to set up. I want to be the very first person to leave. That is fine, but I will tell you that you're sacrificing your sales. So do you want to spend more time on-site setting up and breaking down? and making more sales? Or do you wanna spend less time at work and make less sales? Again, not a right or wrong question or answer, but just understanding that when you have a simple setup, it's also going to result in simple sales. Are you B, I don't have the budget and it's too expensive. Well, you came to the right place because I'm going to show you so many very inexpensive ways to up your display. I'm gonna give you some great resources on where to go and purchase. And um, there's DIY options all the different ways. There's Amazon options that we're going to go over. Or is it C, I'm trying, but it's just not working. Everyone seems to get it, but I'm not creative. And I would say I completely understand that. Um, some of it is trial and error, and I want you to listen to some of the key tips that I'm going to say. And one of them right now is quality, quality, quality. I know sometimes I'm the person I try to skimp on budget, right? I try to do it the cheaper way, but then it ends up not really working out or breaking. So I'm telling you display something that you do want to thoroughly think through. You are going to be investing some money in it because why it's going to work. It's going to stay with you. It's not going to break. It's not going to fall down. So I'm going to talk through some of those things as we go through this presentation as well. Um, the second thing is reach out. We, Big Top Entertainment, we want you to succeed. We know that your success is also our success. The better that you do at our events, the more likely you are to come back and do future events with us as well, right? So it's in our best interest to help you succeed. Send us emails, send us on social media. Um, is this the right fit for me? Is this the right look for me? Um, we've even done like design consultations where we jump on and like, let's design a backdrop together. We are here for all of that because we want you to succeed. So use us as a resource when you need to. So I'm gonna just jump straight into different backdrop styles and ideas, why they work, why they don't work and all the things. So I will say the first, probably the most easy backdrop is a wall on wheels. There are several ways to do this. We see here we have like painted pegboard, which obviously has its advantages because you can use different hooks and different shelving. There's so many accessories that go with pegboard. It's very lightweight. It's fairly inexpensive. Um, the one in the middle here is more of like an actual wood wall that you could paint different colors, just kind of like a blank solid surface. You roll it in and out. And then the slatted one here, it's a little bit smaller. So that's something to consider too, is how are you going to transport this back and forth? Um, for walls on wheels, the best thing is what I've seen is either a trailer or some people just rent a U-Haul van, not a van, but like a box truck. And that's what they use for every single event. And they've even said, it's cheaper for me to just rent it every single show than it is for me to buy a box truck. And what's great about this is you just roll it on and roll it off and you can actually do a very quick setup with the wall on wheels. Here's an example of a wall on wheels at the Heart of Texas Fair and Rodeo. I thought they did great. If you take a look down here at the bottom, you can see how all their walls are on wheels. And then I thought this was cute. Once they had it all put together, they just put this little piece of trim and it made it look like a little roof, a very classy touch. Um, they use grid wall. 
to kind of make a ceiling on the perimeter so they could have some lights up there. Again, just another way to grab attention. And then making these pillars out of a uh, grid wall. I thought this was a very, very good display. Um, and they were able to set up very quickly and they were able to roll in and roll out. And it was only two girls who set up this booth uh, for the rodeo. So kudos to them. Now, here is a resource for you. And again, this will be on the blog in the PDF, but this is AD Woodshop and they are located in Conroe, Texas. And they do specialize in making props and displays out of wood. Um, this link right here will take you directly to their catalog, which I think is great. They're very transparent. It has the pricing. It will tell you exactly how long it will take to make. Um, you do pick it up in Conroe, Texas, and generally their items take about four to eight weeks um, to be produced, but I think this is a adorable as a backdrop. Um, you could paint it in your brand colors so many different ways. I also thought this book one was really cute. Um, you know, obviously if you sell books or something in that genre, um, but they do everything from just very simple to very complex. And uh, what I love about their designs as well is they do think about transport because most of the people buying these props are either exhibitors like you, um, event planners, or people who do uh, like backdrop photo displays for different events. So they do have a backdrop that completely breaks down and will fit in a car. And that's just like a regular solid backdrop. So I would highly recommend checking out AB Woodshop in Conroe. Um, the next option are to do backdrop panels. And basically a panel would be smaller units that you connect together to make a backdrop. Um, so the first one being like very simple wood, this is something you could easily DIY. Um, I have some DIY instructions on our Pinterest board, which I will share that at the end of this presentation. Um, so if you are more into DIY or you do know someone who um, is a carpenter or can do woodcraft or metalcraft, that is a great route to go. It will cost you less money than purchasing um, from a professional. But again, I would just strongly encourage you to think it through like do we really know what we're doing because I know like Dave is a carpenter and if he made me something it would be perfect I'm not a carpenter and if I did it by myself it would definitely fall apart within the first one or two events so keep that in mind you want this to be an investment that's going to last um, again with the pegboard these are actually available on Etsy to purchase and they just ship them directly to you, but very easy to fold up and put like in the back of an SUV or a pickup truck without needing a trailer. And then our favorite good old friends is good old grid wall. You really can't go wrong with grid wall. It's like indestructible, um, but I will say you get what you pay for. And that's really across the board for everything we're going to talk about. You get what you pay for. So make sure that you are doing your research on what you will be receiving, what materials, how much does it weigh. Remember if something is cheap in price, it's most likely cheap in quality. So keep that in mind. If you go for the cheaper quality, you might have to replace it more often and it is going to break. Uh, which brings me to my next slide. These are both available on Amazon. Um, one has wheels, one does not, but using wall dividers is an excellent way to do a backdrop. Very inexpensive, um, very easy for transport. These will fit in most vehicles, um, SUVs, and small crossovers. Um, and so this is, again, just to make a divider between you and your neighbor. You're not necessarily going to be merchandising on these. However, coming up next, Hooked Crochet did an excellent job of using um, wall dividers as part of her display. Um, and so I do believe she purchased these on Amazon. I know that Color Street also has a similar setup with these wall dividers and it seems to be working out very well. Um, I believe they were purchased on Amazon and you see that they also come with this shelf. Um, and so you can use them for different merchandising. And I'm so proud of Monica because she actually took this class, Double Your Sales with Display, last year. And she worked on it and she came out to the rodeo with her new display. And she had almost in only like the first couple days of the rodeo done what she had done in the whole 10 days last year. So I don't know. I think she I think she did double her sales or she got really close to doubling her sales for the whole rodeo just by changing her display. And it was the first time she used this. So very proud, proud mama moment over here. Um, all right, so where do you get Gridwall? Um, I highly recommend Uline. 
and I've made this tiny URL to make it easier for you to find. Um, basically how Gridwall works is you purchase it, I think they're in two foot or three foot sections and then you connect them. The one here in this picture is actually hanging on a wall, but you can also purchase the feet so it stands up on its own. Um, this is great if you do like a lot of outdoor events, indoor and outdoor events. It's just highly indestructible. And as you can see, there are lots of accessories that go with grid wall. One thing I will recommend is you want to get like a, a black or any color tablecloth, just a regular tablecloth and affix it to the back. So that way you still can't see through to your neighbor. The grid wall is a great way to, um, you know, make a, a backdrop that works and is very functional and easy and lightweight to get around. I will say with grid wall, you do get what you pay for. So make sure that you're doing your due diligence, that it's high quality. Um, it's not going to rust. It's not going to break down very easily. And that's why I recommend Uline just because I've always had really great experiences with their quality and they ship from Dallas. So it generally arrives the next business day. Another option is uh, sheet metal. Again, this is probably only realistic if you know someone who can do metal work. Um, this exhibitor, her husband knows how to weld, so he welded the frames for her and then the sheet metal. But if that's on brand, if you're into um, vintage, rusty, chippy, boho, bohemian, cowgirl style, it's really, really a great look. Um, I don't have anywhere where I know that you can just go and buy it. But again, that is something that if you know someone who does metal work um, or does know how to weld, that they can probably very easily DIY make for you. And what they did is they just made different panels. Like this is a section and this is a section. And that's how they would bring it in to the show. I do believe it's on wheels as well. Um, and then they made this little shelf here at the top, which is, you know, gold. Um, as we get into mannequins and stuff throughout the presentation. But if you are able to make a shelf at the top of your backdrop, that gives you more room for some visual merchandising and some decoration like they did balloons. Um, they have their sign. You could also do mannequins and different things here. So that is the sheet metal design. Now we're gonna start to get into a little bit more like not so much heavy lifting, right? We're looking to just make a barrier between us and our neighbor. Um, and so this is what, I'm, this is actually what's pictured here is a pipe and drape, but what I recommend getting is what's called a pillowcase backdrop, and I'm going to give you a, a provider for that here in the next couple slides, but basically what it is is it's a very simple frame with a piece of fabric that goes over it, and that's your backdrop. That will fit in a Corvette. That will fit in the smallest vehicle out there. Um, the, model, the, the tubing folds up. It usually comes with some type of duffel bag. You can put your tubing in, and then you have your fabric, which you can put on the back. Um, Velvet Crush did a great job. They did their logo. You could do logo. You could do a solid color. You could do based on the season. Um, there's a lot of different options. But again, we're trying to generate attention. We're trying to capture their attention when they walk by. They know exactly who we are or what we sell. Um, and we're also trying to create a barrier between us and our neighbor because that's going to focus people's attention when they walk by. And let me show you guys the backside of this exhibit. So this hair pretty miss thing, a little pretty impressed, which I will say this picture is from like two years ago and her display has come so far. I was looking for a picture of her display to include in this presentation and I couldn't find one. So I'll have to get one because just leaps and bounds, what a difference. Uh, but your best sign, right, is your neighbor's worst sign. So you don't wanna be this neighbor. You also wanna have a backdrop because this is what will happen if you do not bring a backdrop and your neighbor does. So which booth is going to get more attention with people walking by? The pretty sign or the back sign? The pretty side, right? So another reason why backdrops are so, so important. Um, so I recommend Best of Signs. They are made internationally. Um, what I like about them is they always have discounts or sales. So check out their website before you go to the uh, checkout page, sign up for their newsletter or something. You'll get typically like 20% off. Um, they just always have sales. And I've always found them to have great quality, great customer service. They generally arrive in two to four weeks, sometimes sooner, but I always give myself when I order from them, I know I have at least four weeks, so I know it'll come in. And this is what it looks like. It's just these bars and they come um, apart. And so it fits into a duffel bag. It has little feet, so it stands. This is perfect for an indoor event 
for an outdoor event, it will still work, but you will want to have like some sandbags or something on the feet just to make sure that it's weighed down, especially outdoor. The ground is not always perfectly even, but for indoors, they're perfect. Um, another style of backdrop is what I call the photography backdrop. And so um, if you do Google search and you look for photography backdrops, you're going to find similar items to this. Um, they're very cute. I mean, this one was obviously on brand. This is a very girly boutique. And so she has a very girly floral backdrop. Um, you can see all the customers inside her booth. They're about the same age. And what does that mean? She's talking to a specific demographic. They were drawn to her. She knows exactly who she's selling to and she's making her display to where they want to come and shop with her. Um, so again, this is the front and this is the back. So you don't want to be this neighbor. You always want to have a backdrop at the very least so you can look your best and grab attention. Which booth is going to stop more people walking by? Which booth is going to have more attention drawn to them and ultimately more sales? the one with the display, the one with the backdrop. Um, so these here, what these are, if you see, they're actually floral panels. And so again, another one, always just make sure you know exactly what you're buying. I found this, I have never worked with them, so I can't say if they're great or not, but Ivory Bloom, they are located here in Houston, Texas. Um, they have their own website as well as an Etsy store. Always read the fine print and understand exactly what you are receiving, including the size, if the frame is included, and if any tools you're going to need are included or what those tools are. A lot of these are put together by zip ties. Um, and so you have the individual panels and you need to affix them to the frame. These are not necessarily cheap either. I would say they range from, I've seen 300 all the way up to about 1200, but they are statement pieces. I mean, if that's your backdrop, everyone is going to notice you. Everyone is going to remember you and everyone is at least going to stop by because they're curious about your backdrop. So again, you have to look at it from a business perspective of what's my return on investment for this display. I guarantee you the more that you invest in your display, the more sales you are going to make. Um, so just my main, con not concern, but my main thing that I just wanna stress is make sure you're getting the right size because um, they're sold by the panel, not necessarily like by the entire backdrop. So you see the price is like, oh, it's $70. Well, it's $70 for one panel. So just make sure communicating with whoever you're purchasing from and make sure that you're getting the correct size that you want. And then the good old pipe and drape. I mean, you can't really go wrong with pipe and drape. It's just a basic backdrop, but it's very easy to use. Um, so this is similar to the pillowcase backdrop in that you get um, your bars, you get your stand, generally some weights can you can get to go on them, and then you get a curtain. Um, and they come by 10 by 10s, 10 by 20s, all the good things. So here we have Pipe and Drape USA. They're made in the US. They ship from Florida, generally arrives in two weeks. And they do have Klarna, which is a installment payment similar to like Sazzle and, and all of those. So they do have a payment plan available. Um, and here is a picture of one of our exhibitors utilizing Pipe and Drape. So you can see it's a great way just to have a blank canvas to work with. Now you can find a lot of pipe and drape on Amazon, but I just want to forewarn you right now that you do get what you pay for. So make sure that you are really looking at the details, make sure it's the right size, know that the less expensive it is, the lighter weight it's going to be, which means you might have trouble with it being stable. You might have trouble with it standing up straight. You might have pieces that break even on the first time use and that literally always happens. People are like, Melissa, I didn't listen. I bought the $29 one and it broke the first time I used it. Um, another thing, just as a note, is to always talk to your exhibitor friends, talk to your neighbors, walk around the show in the early morning and just get to know everyone. And if you see a display piece that you like, ask the exhibitor, where did you get it from? Do you like it? Would you buy the same one again? Um, and that's a great way to just get some insight as to what works and what doesn't work. So I'm going to jump off backdrops and start talking about a few other pieces of displays. Um, and then we'll be wrapping up the presentation probably in the next 10 minutes. So if you do have any specific questions, if you came here to talk about something specific to display, now will be the time to go into the chat and start dropping those questions in there so we can collect those and then I will address them at the end. 
Um, so let's move on to flooring. Um, flooring is worth 10 points in the certification program. And I think it's worth, you know, a good 10 to 20% boost in sales. Um, it just makes such a visual difference. We talked about this display at the beginning and what I really loved about her flooring was not only was it on point with her brand because it's a very like country Southwest feel, um, the color really popped. I mean, that's going to grab people's attention, even if they miss the display somehow and they miss the cute little roof and they missed all the mannequins. Trust me, they saw that hot pink. Um, these are individual pieces, so they fit together. So you can make any different configuration that you need. And it was very much like a foam. So when you stepped on it, it was also just like a nice break from the regular like concrete floor, which I know the exhibitor loves working long events, long hours on your feet. But of course, shoppers like that as well. You know, they might spend an extra few minutes in your booth because you have a nice floor for them to step on um, opposed to, you know, whatever they've been walking on the concrete or the carpet before. So flooring, I think to me, is probably the second most important piece of a display and getting people's attention. Um, other options are rugs. I highly just recommend going to Ross. Um, generally their rugs are like 35 to 65 dollars and then you know you put them in your display if they get dirty they get ruined they get wet with rain whatever the case may be you just throw them away and you start all over know that not all of these things are going to last a lifetime know that everything does have a shelf life and you will always need to be investing in your business and adding new you know display components to your business um also Thinking outside the box, right? Like I love this um, flower cart here. And I think there's so many different products that this could really be a focal point. I mean, you could sell tumblers, you could sell jewelry, like you could sell so many different small things here. You could put shelving or you can put a piece of pegboard in here so you could hang stuff. But again, it's getting outside the box and really making that like showstopper. So people stop, they take attention. They take a picture. They want to put it on Instagram. They want to take a selfie with it. That's what we're looking for. Um, you know, those are kind of the two extremes. We have like a highly professional commercial display, which you can actually buy these like ready to go. Um, they ship them to you and, and you take them show to show. That's an investment in money. That's an investment in time. That's an investment in labor and putting it together. But I guarantee you it's going to make a huge difference in sales um, because you're going to get great placement at the show. People will remember you and they will stop by. And then always the DIY options here, right? So something a little different. They have like this little uh, tent type ceiling and then that goes down into their backdrop and then to the floor. So it's very, so many creative ways. All of these photos are on our Pinterest board, which I'll share with you guys here at the end, how you can go there. Um, a great DIY option is crates, right? Um, if you have a product that would fit in here, if you sell candles, if you sell, um, I saw someone said Scentsy and, um, you know, like Scentsy diffusers, jewelry, like things that are smaller in size. This is perfect because not only can you just stack them up to build your display, but you can also use this to transport items to and from the show. So when you break down, you just put the items in the crate, crate goes in the vehicle and you leave. Um, here, this is, you know, a little bit more what I would consider like intense, right? But just how cute is it? I like the colors, having like branding, cohesive colors. Um, they have their cooler. This kind of reminds me of like Munchos. If anyone knows, they sell the dipped apples, kind of how their new display is. Um, but creating some type of like false awning with your company name is a really great way to grab their attention. And then kind of going back to the beginning of our goals. So we need to understand what you sell in two seconds. They've done a fantastic job, both of these examples. Um, one side, this is you know a, a gift shop boutique. They have candles, they have tumblers. You're gonna find all types of little knickknacks in here. Great gifting opportunities. And they obviously sell leather bags, right? They sell leather purses and you kind of get a vibe for their brand and what they do. Um, so making it extremely obvious for people to know exactly what you sell and utilizing your vertical space that's also worth I believe 10 points on the certification program um, is using 
vertical space. So yes, having a backdrop and the backdrop really is to divide your area and to get people's attention into your booth and not your neighbor behind you or beside you. Um, but also utilizing vertical space for merchandising, because when you come and you purchase a 10 by 10 booth and you bring three tables and you box yourself in, you've really limited how much space you can use for merchandising, um, opposed to using something like shelving. This is a cabinet that's probably also on wheels that can very easily be just rolled off into a trailer or into a U-Haul box truck and then rolled back in. And you gain so much more merchandising space and you can put out so much more inventory when you utilize your vertical space. Um, I would love for someone to do something like this at our show. I think that would be adorable. Um, again, just understanding what you sell. There's so many ways to do it, but think about that and look at yourself critically, right? The next time you set up or if you have photos, do people really understand what I sell just by walking by and do they understand it in two seconds or do they really have to look and stand around to figure it out? Um, another great display option for t-shirts um, or apparel in general, that's just like a string that's running through the shirts um, or probably a pole that has, you know, an anchor over here. And then they have all of their shirts and sizes down here where customers or the exhibitor can get their shirts for them. Um, so just a way to really get a lot of things out there in a very small amount of space. This is actually from Cavenders. So you could go and check it out in Cavenders if you want to see how they did this display. But again, if you had like a wall on wheels, and you sell t-shirts or something similar, you do sublimation, um, you do customization, then you can have all your designs here and you're ready to go inventory down here. So a way to really maximize the amount of space that you have opposed to using just clothing racks, which clothing racks do you have their, you know, moment in the sun, there's a great place for them, but not always the best. And make it easy to say, yes, do you have a cash wrap? Do people know where to pay or know who's working the booth? We actually get this quite a lot as a um, comment after events on social media. Um, like they couldn't find the exhibitor or they couldn't get their attention or they weren't quite sure like who the exhibitor was in the booth. They wanted to buy something, but they actually walked away and didn't buy it because they couldn't quite figure out who was the exhibitor. Um, the other comment that kind of goes with that is exhibitors talking to each other too much or on their phone and not giving the customer attention. People are very shy and they don't want to inconvenience anyone. And so um, you need to make sure that, you know, you are available to the customers because most likely the first thing that customer is going to tell you is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I have a question. I'm sorry, but I want to buy this. I'm sorry, but what is the price? Um, so being available, friendly, hey, how can I help you? Let me know if you have any questions. Um, and being available to them is so also critical for sales. Um, making it easy to say yes. If you sell um, apparel, clothing, this is what I call like forward facing merchandising. So you have the poles and people can see the outfit. You can pair it up with the skirt or the pants um, like we did here, the shirt and the jacket. It gives people the entire idea of how they're supposed to wear it. And that is what people want. They do want to be told what to do. They want to be told what is in style. They want to be told what is on trend. Um, the difference between this and like a regular traditional clothing rack is then people have to go looking for the item through the clothing rack. And that's where mannequins become so key. I guarantee you whatever is on a ma mannequin will be your number one seller that day. So if something's on your mannequin and it's not selling, you will need to change the mannequin's clothes. Um, the more mannequins, the better if you sell clothes Clothing, I would say every single show invest in one new mannequin until you just can't fit any more in your booth. That's how important they are to merchandising and display. And that's why big box retailers charge a lot more than places like Ross because they have the square footage and the space. They set up their mannequins. People see the outfit. They like it. They want to buy it. They don't have to think about it. Someone gave them the answer versus Ross. Why are the prices cheaper? Because there are no mannequins and you have to go through each individual item on the rack to find what you're looking for. And that's why one of the number one complaints about why people don't shop at Ross is, I never find anything I like there because nobody's told them what to do. So think about that, whether you're selling clothing, whether you're selling books, whether you're selling candles, you need to make it easy for them to say yes. You need to tell them what to do because ultimately that is what people want. Um, another way to make it easy to say yes is with tablecloths. Um, 
I believe Best of Signs has um, custom tablecloths that you can get made. Um, and it, let's just start with the very, very basics. It is on our um, certification. It's worth, I think, five points is to have tablecloths. Why? Because they cover up the ugly, right? So you can store things under your table and they cover up all the boxes and bags. So it helps make the space look nice and tidy. But having a custom tablecloth um, is just one step better, right? So like if I'm the type of person, which I am, that I always look for made in America. I always look for made in Texas. Um, if you have one of those two things, I'm more likely to buy. Then having that on your tablecloth immediately, I know, okay, well, if I'm in looking for knives, well, this is one that matches up with how I like to purchase. Um, guaranteed forever. Obviously the name, Cutco. Um, free lifetime sharpening. So they've kind of told you all of the things that are important to their selling position. This is what, once you start talking to the sales rep, what they're going to be telling you, well, these are made in America. You get free lifetime sharpening. I'll come by anytime you call to sharpen your knives for you. So just relaying that information, um, an easy way to do it is through custom tablecloths. And then making it easy to say yes, um, this type of display, what I like to call like the U or the horseshoe, where it's like you have all of your products pushed out to the customers and then you as the exhibitor are behind and you're kind of, you know, running the show from in there. When I was an exhibitor, this was mostly the type of display that I would use. Um, that way I could interact with the customers, but also they could kind of have their freedom to explore. Um, and so I love how PDQ does their display. They have a great background drop they have their logo you see the pricing you know exactly what's going on customers can kind of go on their own and explore but you also have that ability to speak to them one-on-one -on -one. so again like leather goods um anything customizable um candles and jewelry um all of those type of things this is a great style setup because you have smaller items you don't need as much merchandising space and you can really get those one-on-one -on -one conversations going this obviously doesn't work so well for like clothing um, all right, guys, so we're getting here towards the end. This is our Pinterest board. Again, this will all be on the website. You can actually go to bigtop.show slash blog slash display, which I'll drop in the comments so you don't have to worry about writing that down. Um, and that's going to be the old display training right now, but there's a direct link to our Pinterest board and we have thousands and thousands and thousands of ideas out there. And I go there all the time. Um, and upload stuff and, you know, add more pins, um, especially if someone asks a specific question about, you know, how do I display X, Y, Z, then I'll go put some up about that. So if you do ever want to know about questions, just send us a Facebook message and we'll throw some stuff up on the Pinterest board for you. Um, you'll find a lot of DIYs. You'll find a lot of really wild and crazy ideas of things that I like. Um, and it's a lot of it is you have to think outside the box. So like this is for a wedding, but how can I make it for me? Um, and so you're going to see different designs, just, just all kinds of different ideas to really get the juices flowing. Like I think this is pretty cool. If you have the right product, I think that little pop-up tent would be really cool. Um, I'll let you guys go through that on your own, but tons and tons of great ideas on the Pinterest board. And I always recommend hitting it up every once in a while because you'll always find new items. 